Hello, viewers. I am live and in color in the CBS This Morning Toyota Green Room with Sheku Kane Mason, also known as Cello Bay. <laughs> Do you like being called Cello Bay? It's all right. It's, it really is all right. He became an instant sensation after his mesmerizing performance at the royal wedding of Prince Harry and Meghan Markle in May. His album, Inspiration, charted number one on classical charts in the U.S. and the U.K. He is a student at the prestigious Royal Academy of Music in London and was recently named one of Time Magazine's Next Generation of Leaders. We like that. He makes his U.S. concert debut this week in Seattle. We welcome you to the United States, Sheku. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. <laughs> Have you been here before to the States? This isn't your first um, trip, or is it? It's not my first time, no. I've been a few times. I was last in New York uh, a year ago. A year ago. Um, well, yeah. let me just tell you from my perspective what, what happened to all of us who were watching. I was, there I was there at the wedding. I wasn't covering it. I was on a balcony outside the wedding. But we were streaming it live. We were carrying it live. And when you started to play... Everybody in the room said, who is that guy? Oh, my God, he's so good. Oh, my God, he's so young. And so then we thought, how did it come to be? So how did it come to be that you ended up playing at the royal wedding? Um, I'm not sure exactly, but um, I was um, about a year before the wedding, I was performing at a charity event at which Prince Harry was attending. So he would have heard me play there. And, um, and then the January before the wedding, I was contacted and um, then called by, by Meghan Meghan Markle, Markle um, called you. Asking to perform at the wedding. And well, I'm thinking, yes. Sheku, well, we know how this came to be. Harry saw you, and then he clearly liked what he saw, and he says to Meghan, I saw somebody really great. So your phone rings, you pick it up, and I want you to take me through the conversation. Was it Meghan on the phone? Did somebody say Meghan's on the line? And what did she say? Um, yeah, so I was... Uh, I can't remember exactly where I was. I was coming back from rehearsal or something, and I got this phone call, and... Um, I answered and they said, we've got, we've got Meghan Markle here, she'd like to speak to you. Um, and yeah, she just asked me to perform at the wedding. And of course, I said I'd be honoured to, uh -huh. to perform at that. And um, yeah, I looked at the date and I was free. So and you were free. <laughs> <laughs> well, what would we have done, Sheku, if you had had a booking that day? Well, I don't know. But look, we're lucky, we're glad that you didn't. Okay, so did she... Give you, did they give you direction on what they would like you to play, or did, you, did they leave it up to you? Um, a, a bit of both. There were pieces that, um, cello pieces that they, they, they liked and suggested. There were pieces that I suggested them to, to mm -hmm. listen to. Um, and so it was a combination of both. So it was a combination yeah. of the two. But they were all three pieces that I um, know very well in enjoy playing. So it was fine. And we should point out, it's not like, well, first let me ask you this. Were you nervous when you were asked to play? Were you, as you were getting ready, did you think this is a royal wedding? Millions, billions of people would be watching? Or did you just think, I'm a professional, I, I got this? Um, I mean, generally before I perform, I don't get um, nervous or anything. You don't get nervous? Um, obviously this was a performance very different to what I'm used to, but um, yeah, at the same time I just Okay. Wanted to enjoy it. Okay, because this is what I want you to understand, audience. He is he is well known in classical musical circles. So it's not like they just grab some random Joe off the street who could play well. You are really considered at the top of your game at what you do. I want people to understand that. You've been playing the cello. How old are you now? Nineteen. Nineteen. You've been playing the cello for since you were since I was six. I read something that your mom said that once you got the cello, they couldn't get it off of you. You come from a family of how many kids? Uh, there are seven of us. So you're yeah. one of seven, and everybody plays a musical instrument. Yes. So definitely. it was important in your family. Uh, definitely, and for me, growing up with um, music all around was uh, such kind of an inspiration. I think. Are you the only one in the family that plays the cello? Uh, no, I have two sisters who also play the cello. What other instruments do your siblings play? Uh, piano and violin and viola. So your mom says when the first time that Sheku, when he, when he became attacked, that, that she couldn't get the cello off of you, what was it about the cello that attracted you to that instrument? Um, lots of things. I used to love listening to a cellist that I really admired, and that was um, one of the things that really inspired me. And also, I think the cello is very lucky in the repertoire that it has. It has Lots of, there are lots of wonderful pieces written for the cello that I enjoy mm -hmm. um, discovering. And I think um, it's an instrument that has such a range of sounds. And so um, I enjoy exploring no, it's, it. And you have, we have a treat coming up for you because Shaco has agreed to play two songs for us. But I want you to get a 
sense of who he is and his love for this instrument. Because I'm told this instrument is 400 years old. It's about 400 years. And that you never, ever let it out of your sight, that it's with you always. <laughs> you should hear, yeah. Well, you hear these stories about, you know, famous musicians leaving, you know, Stradivarius's, you know, very expensive violins or very expensive instruments in a car. You could never see that happening to you? I really hope not, yeah. No? <laughs> well, I, I, I Sheku, I hope that to too. That. Thank you. Yeah. So at night, is it in the bedroom with you? Is it always in your? I didn't say it was. I didn't say it was in. The, I didn't say it was in the bed. <laughs> but is it in the bedroom where you can see it? Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you worry about it? I don't worry as long as I'm very careful with, with it. it. And, yeah. Does it have a name? It doesn't have a name. No. It doesn't. No. Why? As in, I haven't named it. No. Why? Why? Um, I mean, I've only had this for a year and a half, mm -hmm. um, so I'm still getting to know it. I don't know. Anyway, it just seems right. that something that means so much to you. Mm. Do you like the name Gail? <laughs> Maybe <laughs> I do. Maybe I'll call Jacob, it. my name is Gail. <laughs> He's like, well, no, I'm definitely not naming it that. <laughs> okay, you're making it. I'm just throwing it out there. And by the way, Gail in this country is a unisex name. Mine is spelled G-A-Y-L-E, but if you want yeah. it to be a boy, it could be G-A-I-L, okay. or it could be G-A-L-E, or it could be G-A-E-L. Just mull that over. A little. <laughs> um, but I am curious about growing up in a musical home. Was it something that your parents said, all of my seven children will take music lessons? Are they musicians themselves? Um, they both played instruments when they were younger. And what did they play? Loved. Did any of them so, play the cello? Yeah, my dad played the piano and the cello. Okay. Um, and my mum uh, had piano lessons and, mm -hmm. and stuff. But um, they're not musicians anymore and they went on to do other things, but they still love uh, listening to music. And mm -hmm. And so that's um, wonderful support to have that. But um, when we were younger, they got us into to loads of things. We, we did lots of sports and... What, what um, sports do you play? Uh, so I play football. Oh, okay. Um, uh, football so football soccer, means soccer. soccer. Yeah. Football yeah. means soccer. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> football means soccer in England. Okay, go ahead. See, I was very proud of myself. I knew that. All right, go ahead. And then, yeah, I was into maths and physics and, and lots of mm -hmm. other things. But music was uh, the only thing I really loved and can see myself doing after the rest of my life. Now, after the, uh, after the royal wedding, you were referred to as Cello Bay. And Cello Bay, for um, viewers that may not be the hip and cool viewers, Cello Bay normally means somebody hot. That's a hot kind of, I like this guy. So how did you feel about being called Cello Bay? Because, you know, we're just meeting today for the first time. You do seem very low key. Are you very low key? Um, Maybe, yeah, perhaps. I'm very, very relaxed, but... You're very um, relaxed. Did you like being called Cello Bay? That's, that I, is a compliment, actually. It, it's, it's um, yeah, it's really, really nice. And I think what it hopefully shows is that um, one of the things that I, re I really try to do is bring classical music to as many people as I can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think bring it to young people who haven't had the chance to hear this yeah. wonderful music at all, I think is something really important to me. And so. Great. Well, and that's what I think, too, Sheku, that really stood out. Number one, you're a person of color. Uh, I was saying to you before we went on camera that I interviewed Lewis Hamilton actually last night, who is the only black Formula One driver who's also from um, England, as you know. And he says one of the things that he, that he thinks about is growing up, he didn't see anybody that looked like him and that he really does make it a mission to bring this sport to as many people as he can and certainly to diverse communities. And I get the sense you feel that as well. Yeah, I think it's definitely very difficult to see yourself doing something if no one who looks like you is, is doing it. And um, for me, I grew up around um, my siblings playing music and mm -hmm. I was always encouraged from, from a young age. But I think, um, I think it's really important that I use my, my position now to bring classical music to an audience mm -hmm. and, and inspire people who haven't um, who wouldn't normally get the opportunity to hear this music. I well, I will say this, you're, as I said, you're very well known um, in, in, in your industry uh, of classical music. But for a lot of people, that was the first time we were seeing you and hearing you. Did you get a big response? Did your life change after that? When you were walking down the street, did they say, hey, hey, how you doing? <laughs> um, it was, um, I mean, obviously I was performing in front of so many people who were hearing me for the first time. and. Um, I really uh, was uh, honored to have that opportunity to do that and um, I would say my life has changed in, in many ways but my focus on 
developing as a musician is still is still focused will always on that. Be, will always yeah. be my, my focus. Yeah. But were you surprised that 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 performance attracted so much attention, and did it attract for attention from girls, from boys, from what, from all um, over? <laughs> it was yeah. I was very. Did that take you off with guard? The, um, no, I just I enjoy um, having the opportunity to perform to, to people perform. and meet loads of new people. And so okay. So yeah. All right, Cello Bay, also known as Sheku. What would you like to play for us today? I know you said you would play two things. What yeah. Like? Um, let's do. Let's play one, and then we'll chat after you play. What do you think? Sure. Um, the, the first piece I would like to play is the prelude from Bach's um, first suite in G major. Bach wrote um, six suites um, mm -hmm. for solo cello, um, and this one that I'm going to play now is probably the most um, well known. So okay. Do you need me to do anything? No, <laughs> you can sing along if you, <laughs> if you want to. Do you need my help in any way? <laughs> Shall I hold the cello? Okay, here we go. <laughs> I was watching your wrist. Your wrist flows so fluidly over the strings. What do you? You seem to be in a zone. What are you thinking when you're playing? Are you thinking oh. anything? You, you make all <laughs> sorts be. of expressions. You um, know. I'm thinking lots of different things, and um, the music that I, I play is music that I've kind of lived with and, and studied for for a long time, and uh, it's. Um, I try to really get to the depth of what each mm -hmm. thing in the music means, and so. When I'm performing, I'm just thinking about that. How do you feel when you're performing? Um, I think it depends on what I'm performing. Um, okay, how do you feel right now? Uh, what do you right feel? now, um, yeah. I think that's a piece of such... Um, I think there's kind of a whole world within um, just that piece of music, and there's so many wonderful harmonies, and so I really just mm -hmm. enjoy um, playing that. When you're not with your cello, when you're not playing, what other kinds of music do you like? Are you a country um, western fan? I'm a, a massive uh, reggae fan. Reggae fan, to, okay. I've grown up listening to Bob Marley. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Um, so I, yeah, I love his music. So when you're sitting on a plane and you're traveling, is that what you're? And you have earbuds in. Are you, is that what you're listening to? Yeah, I mean, usually on a plane and train, I'm asleep. So. 
<laughs> but, <laughs> but if I'm if I'm not, then I would be listening to that. And when you're not when you're not in school, you're a student. You're in your second year, sophomore year, but you're in your second year um, in college. What are you studying other than um, music? What do you? Studying? I know I study music. That's it. That's that's it. Yeah. I know it's the Royal Music Academy, but I didn't know you don't have to. There are no other, no other kind of courses to take. Um, no, no. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. No, yeah. It's just purely. All right. Which I I love. I, I, clearly, you do. And when you graduate, what would you like to do? Um, I think I think with studying music, even when you finish and you've graduated, you never finish um, learning and, and developing. So it's not like I graduate and then mm -hmm. I'm a professional musician. I think there's always more to learn. But I hope to continue to perform to perform around the world. The reason why I ask is um, I, I go back to Lewis again. Yesterday at this uh, at this interview with him. I played a tape when he was six, and he oh. was just starting go karting. You call it go karting with the yeah. uh, with the and using the. Uh, he had exquisite eye hand coordination, and even at at six, four six years old, he there was an interview with him saying, you know, it's my dream to one day be a Formula One driver, which is so That's cool to see yeah. that from the time he was a little boy in this little go kart with the number forty four, which is he has today. To see your dreams come true, mm. when you sit as you sit here today, and when you were growing up, is do you have a dream job or a dream for your life that you would like to see, other than involving music or not involving music? Um, I think I've always, from when I was very young, enjoyed performing to people, and mm -hmm. I think for me, my my dream is to always just um, perform around the world in as many places as I can and to as many people as I can. As you can. Well, you're making your debut in the United States. You're at, you're, we're in New York, of course, live in, in the green room at CBS this morning. But you're leaving us and going to Seattle. I am, and yes. What were you? what are you going to do in Seattle? Um, so you make your debut? Yeah, I'm really looking forward to, to playing that. I've never been to Seattle before. Mm -hmm. um, I'm playing uh, uh, Tchaikovsky Rococo Variations, mm -hmm. uh, which is a uh, piece for cello and orchestra. So I'm playing with the Seattle. Wow. Um, Symphony Orchestra there, so I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah, I think they're very lucky that they get you. And what's your? this will be your last selection for us today. Um, what What do you want to close with? Um, well, I, I said that I really enjoy listening to Bob Marley. Yeah. And um, so I have an arrangement of one of my favorite Bob Marley songs. What's the name of um, it? No Woman, No Cry. That's the only one I know. OK, <laughs> no woman, no cry. Shall I sing along? <laughs> if you want. He's like, no, thank you. OK. <laughs> OK. <laughs>
very, I could have done that part. <laughs> very nice, but I wouldn't dare touch it. Congratulations. Thank you so much for coming to New York, really. It, it was an honor to meet you because I know how good you were that day, and I can only imagine what's to come of your career. Just know this, we are cheering you on, and good Thank luck you. in Seattle. Thank you very much. Bye.